Welcome to this Innovise software video. We are going to be introducing the GIS Gateway and demonstrate some of its current features and abilities. What is the GIS Gateway? The GIS Gateway is something that an Innovise software allows you to exchange data between the model and the GIS. This is available in InfoWater, InfoSewer, as well as InfoSwim software. This tool can allow you to simplify model creation and maintenance by saving exchange clusters that can be used repeatedly. And this will increase your sustainability of updating your model, as well as the repeatability of update procedures as they're completed. This makes it ideal for maintaining a one-to-one -one model to GIS relationship. Some of the key features in the GIS Gateway is that you can use it to add new elements, things like pumps, pipes, or junctions, etc. You can use it to update existing elements, whether it be their geometry or their attributes. You also have the ability to remove model elements that are no longer in the GIS. Basically, what this does is it checks to see if the model ID in the uh, scope of the exchange, if that cannot be found in the GIS uh, data set, then it will remove that model element. That can be a very uh, useful feature. The GIS Gateway is also very flexible. It's not just for importing particular elements, but also the other database tables that are used in the software, things like fire flow tables, status tables, quality tables, something that uh, allows you a lot of flexibility in using this tool to bring data from external sources into the model or back out of the model into those external sources. Now, each exchange cluster that's used in the GIS Gateway, this is how you create and uh, edit elements, you set up a, an exchange cluster, and a cluster can have one of three functions. First, it can be used to create new records, or update existing records, or delete non-matched records, like we spoke about previously. The uh, Again, the update records can be either geometry or attributes, or both. You can set it up either way. Exchanges can be bi-directional. You can say, bring model, uh, have this exchange update data in my model, update model data from my model to my GIS, or one way, either way. Typically, most people use that typically as a load and bringing it in and not in the reverse. Uh, you can have joins that are either tabular or spatial joins. You can also limit the scope of the update to be associated with just elements within a domain. So that's using your model query tools or your database manager uh, or your domain manager. Uh, so that you can say only update elements that are within my domain, as well as using a where clause to select only certain elements within the GIS data source that you want to use for your update. And the format for the where clause is basically exactly the same as what is used in the select by attributes in ArcGIS. So if you create it in there, find that, copy that uh, text the way that it formats the where clause, paste that in there. That's exactly how that's going to work. Uh, you also have the ability to create unique IDs. If your GIS data set does not have unique IDs that you can use the model, check this box and have it recreate unique IDs so that everything is unique. Um, some of the new features that are very useful. First is the ability to preview changes uh, in the exchange before the exchange is completed. When you're running an exchange and you hit the load button and you actually run this compare button, uh, for example, in this, this is the new, and we're doing a compare, and it lists out the 10 new pipes that would be added if that exchange was running. Uh, and then if you're doing an update and there are attribute changes, things like changing length, diameter, whatever, it will highlight in red the attributes that are going to be updated by the exchange. Another new key feature is the ability to log changes. There's multiple ways it does this. First, there's a text file where it logs the IDs of the elements that are exchanged. As you can see in right here, as we run this pipe update, it's going to update two different pipes. And then in here, uh, it's going to create two new pipes when this cluster was run. And so all those get logged in that log file if that is checked. You can also uh, set aside selection sets that will highlight elements that were updated, as well as elements that are newly created. And that allows you to go back after the exchange is completed, put those selection set elements in the domain and visually see exactly what was updated by that last exchange. That could be very useful. 
Uh, that concludes our demo of the software at this time. If you have any further questions, please contact us. Thank you.